greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm happy this morning to tell you that uh, Jesus is Lord. And as we celebrate the Resurrection Sunday, I welcome you to join me as we learn the Word of God. My name is Dokas Wamboi Waiharo. I love Jesus as my personal savior and I minister with Worldwide Gospel Church of Kenya, Nakuru Kiti. Today, our topic will be the reason Jesus. And I want to say this, the doctrine of resurrection is the foundation of the New Testament. Jesus' resurrection is mentioned over 100 and four times in the New Testament. And you know that uh, something that is repeated over a hundred times it means that it is an there is an evidence in it. And this gives us glory, it gives us pride as Christians to know that our Lord Jesus Christ is no longer in the tomb but our Lord Jesus Christ was risen over 2,000 years ago. And this joy is because the tomb of Jesus Christ is empty. Even today, it is empty. I visited Israel and I saw the tomb and there it was empty. I want to say this, that when Jesus Christ was on the cross, it was so painful. He was in pain. He cried. And you remember he mentioned his last words. And he said, it is finished. And I know that where God was, when Jesus resurrected, my thought is, maybe he said, amen. Because the work of salvation was completed when Jesus resurrected. So our doctrine, the Christian doctrine, we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you today, that's why we are celebrating that our Savior, our Lord, lives again. I want us to learn what are the biblical evidences that support his resurrection. I have eight points and I will go quickly. Point number one, I've mentioned it. It is in Matthew chapter 28 from verse five to verse six. You remember the angel spoke to the women who had gone very early to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus Christ. And when the angel saw these women, he approached them and he told them, I know whom you are seeking. Do not fear. I know you are seeking Jesus Christ, who was crucified and whom they laid him there. And he continued to say, he is not here. He is risen. The first witness was the empty tomb. And even today we still declare that the tomb of Jesus Christ is still empty. If you read in Luke chapter 24, from verse 3, the Bible says that they entered and found not the body of Jesus Christ. The women entered and they found not the body of Jesus Christ. So the first evidence is that the first people on that Sunday, the resurrection Sunday, they saw an empty tomb. And that gives us glory, as I said. Number two, the evidence is the testimony of the angels. I have told you that the angel testified to the women. He also testified to other people, to Peter. And this, is, this gives us joy. It gives us hope that he that we believe in is no longer dead, but he is alive. The evidence number three, it's the people whom he, 
he visited or whom he showed himself up after resurrection. You remember that Jesus Christ was seen on this earth after resurrection 40 days before his ascension. And for 40 days, he appeared to the disciples. He appeared to his friends. And the Bible says that they recognized him. You remember even Thomas was, he, he didn't agree. He couldn't believe that he was seeing Jesus. But the Bible says that Jesus told him to touch the wounds and see the wounds as the permanent, as the marks of the nails. So the people whom he's, he showed himself to, they gave an evidence that he is risen. Number four, Jesus, you remember, he ate and he drank with his friends. That is also an evidence. His friends, after resurrection, they were with him. And you remember, he even gave the disciples, two people who were walking on the way to Emmaus. He gave them the bread and he gave them the something to drink. And when they ate the bread, the Bible says that uh, their eyes were opened. That is a clear evidence that Jesus is no longer in the tomb. Jesus is alive. Number five, evidence number five is by over 500 people who saw him at once. And this one is according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 6. Imagine 500 people at once. He appeared to them and they saw him. And that is a clear evidence. So the gospel of the risen Jesus is a true gospel. If you've never thought about it, today I want to remind you and to let you know that the Lord Jesus Christ is alive. He is not dead. Evidence number six, it is by the appearance to Stephen. Deacon, Deacon Stephen. The Bible says that when they were stoning Stephen at the point of his death, he said that he saw, behold, I see the heavens open and I see the Lord Jesus Christ standing up on the right hand of God. That was a clear evidence because he declared, he proclaimed, he said, he saw the heavens open. And even today, we still stick to that, that Stephen, before his death, the Lord opened his eyes and he saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God. I want to encourage you today to know that Jesus is not like any other person. Jesus was the son of God and he is alive. He resurrected. Number seven, the evidence is by his appearance to Paul. You remember Paul was a persecutor. He persecuted the saints. His name was Saul. But when he met Jesus, Jesus himself appeared to him. And you remember in the, in the book of Acts, Paul was asking Jesus, who are you? And Jesus replied to him and said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. So when he was persecuting the saints, Jesus was seeing and he was telling him, it's me that you are persecuting. And at that point, Saul received Christ. He was converted and he became the apostle of Jesus Christ. And if you read in his epistles, Paul declares that I, Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ. So by his appearance to Paul, it is also a clear evidence. And number eight, it is by the testimony of the many people, the millions in this world, they still proclaim. And even today, we still proclaim that Jesus is alive and he is our savior. And I'm calling you today, if you've thought about it, you've never thought about it this way, 
know that it is evidence. There is the biblical evidence of what we are saying, of what I'm saying. And that's why we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. How then did Jesus resurrect? Because this is also another question that most of us ask ourselves. How could it be? How did Jesus resurrect? And I want to bring to us three ways, three powers that resurrected Jesus. Number one, it is by the power of God himself. In Acts chapter 2, from verse 23 to verse 24, the Bible says, by wicked hands, by wicked hands, they have crucified and slain him, whom God raised again. So, yes, they crucified him, they slain him, but God raised him again. It is the power of God, the ability in God that resurrected Jesus. And that is good news. That is good news. The other power, the how he resurrected, it is by the power of himself. Jesus Christ, you know, he was God. He is God, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So him himself, he declared in John chapter 2 from verse 19 that I will destroy this temple and in three days I will build it up. In this text, Jesus was referring to his death that he will die, but in three days after, he will resurrect. And this is good news. And then the third power, it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you read in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, the Bible says, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Holy Spirit. Yes, he was put to death in flesh but he was quickened again he rose up again the power of the holy spirit quickened him to rise up and the same power of the holy spirit is in us we the believers and it quickens us to do the unbelievable things and we are able to pray for the sick and they be, they, they be healed and we declare a word in that power of the Holy Spirit. We do supernatural miracles by the grace of God. Why? Because the same, same power of the Holy Spirit that rose Jesus Christ is the same power that is in us. The same power of God is the same power in us. And I thank God because it is well with us. Praise be to God. Then after his resurrection, after knowing the evidence and the power, then the, re the result of his re resurrection, it has an impact. And let me say this. Number one, it proves the existence of God. When we declare that Jesus Christ died on the cross, he was buried. On the third day, he rose again. And as I have said that the power of God rose him again. This one explains the existence of God. He rose because a living God resurrected him. And the God that we believe, the God that we serve, is a living God, is a mighty God, and we continue believing in him because he is able to resurrect even the dead. Are you sick outside there? God is able to heal you. Number two, the result, it proves that salvation is an accomplished fact. It is an accomplished fact. You cannot, it wasn't repeated again. It will never be repeated. Jesus died and rose again. And that is the message and that is the gospel that we preach even today. Number three, the result, it guarantees that everyone else shall rise again. You know, when Jesus Christ will come, where, during the rapture, the, the righteous will be the first ones to be 
risen to rise and live again. And they will be captured in the air. And that is when the Bema seat, Jesus will be seated on the Bema seat. And there will be the judgment of the saints. They will be judged first. And then the unrighteous again, they will rise again to the judgment. They will be judged. And I thank God because they will just rise up from the dead, from their dead body. They will rise up again with the same power that Jesus Christ rose on the third day. And I'm happy to say that one day we will be there. And do not fear because a day is coming and all of us will be gathered before our Lord Jesus Christ. And we will have that body is the body, the same body that he had. Yes, some people ask, how, how, how was he moving? How was, how was he for 40 days? But I'm telling you, it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Number five, the result, it prepares him to fulfill his next promise. And the next promise that he gave is that, Jesus Christ will come again. He said, I will come again. And that gives us strength. It gives us power. It gives us hope. It helps us to stick our eyes unto Jesus, waiting that he is coming again. Today, as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, maybe you are there, you don't know Jesus. You've never confessed Jesus as Lord and your Savior. I want to tell you today, this is the day. Let this celebration have a meaning in your life. Are you sick? Are you feeling unworthy? Are you feeling pain in your heart? Are you feeling like you are not loved? I want to tell you this good, be new, good news, that Jesus Christ loved you. And that's why he came, and that's why he died on the cross. So kindly, as I conclude, allow me to say this or to ask this question. Do you know that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest power in the world? He's the only human being who resurrected in three days. And we thank God. And do you know that for 40 days, the saints who had died before Jesus Christ, the Bible says that they were seen in the streets of Jerusalem. That is also a clear evidence that we shall resurrect. And I want to say this, that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a greater power that broke the tomb. It broke the, it broke the tomb. It, that it couldn't even uh, hinder Jesus from rising and from uh, getting out of the tomb and going out. I thank God that today we celebrate that the tomb of Jesus Christ is empty. The tomb of Jesus Christ is empty. And as we conclude, let me tell you this, that we need to serve God knowing that he's risen, he's coming back again. If you have never received Christ as your Lord and your Savior, this is the day. This is the now. And you can pray this prayer behind me. Lord Jesus, I come before you. I confess of all my sins. I pray that you forgive me today. And I thank you because by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, my sins were washed away. And I declare that I am forgiven of my sins. Today, I believe that Jesus died for me. How I pray, Lord, that you forgive me of all my iniquities. Bless me this day. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Allow me to pray together with our fellow Kenyans. Because as you know, in this season, we have this epidemic that uh, we are really worried about. And we feel like uh, we will not be there tomorrow. I want to tell somebody that you will be there. You will live kindly. Just stick to the, to the, to the instructions from the health uh, 
ministry and you will be saved. Make sure that you wash your hands. Make sure that you sanitize your hands. Make sure that you keep a distance and also make sure that you stay at home and also put on a mask. It's good to put on a mask when you're going out. It's now a law. You can also be judged. And I also want to pray with the sick, knowing that God is able to heal us. You are there, you are sick, you're feeling discouraged, you feel like uh, you're not loved. I'm telling you, that is the reason why Jesus Christ resurrected. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I worship you. Thank you, Father, for this day. I pray for my listeners. I pray that God, you bless them. I pray that, Father, you remember them. May you touch them in the name of Jesus. May you remember them, King of glory. How I pray that may your healing hand be upon them. I pray that, Lord, you fill us with your joy and your peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. God bless you as you celebrate Easter Monday. I wish you a happy holiday. Amen.